Today we're doing lesson 10.4, surface area of triangular prisms. Similar to our last lesson, we found surface area of rectangular prisms. Here we're doing the same except they are going to be with triangles. Now, what we did was we found the area of each of the two dimensional faces and then added them together. We will be doing the exact same thing here. First, on page 773, we're gonna look at this example of a triangular prism. It says here, Raj and his dad are building a ramp to move his dirt bike onto a trailer, and it asks us to draw the faces. So the first face, the front, that's if I was looking at it head on right here. So when I draw that front, it's going to be like that. And it is a triangle. As such, the back is the other side. And that's also going to be triangle. Also, these are our bases because these are the two spots that are parallel from one another. The others are not parallel. Our top is if we were looking at this straight on, and that is going to be a rectangle. Similarly, the bottom is the exact same. It is also a rectangle. And our side, that's that little piece right there. And it is also a rectangle. So surface area of triangular prisms. Here we have this triangular prism right here, and it kind of looks like a piece of cake. In fact, this lesson should be a piece of cake. <laughs> anyway, so we see this triangular prism right here, and it's made up of five different shapes. Here we have a face, which is this part right here. We also have another face, which is that part right there. We have our third face, which is that part right there. Then we have our two bases. Now, you might be wondering again, why are those the bases? That's because the two bases are the two ones that are parallel from one another. So the surface area of a triangular prism is the sum, the addition, of the areas of the two triangular bases and the three rectangular faces. Essentially, we're just adding up the area of all the sides. Let's look at this example problem right here. Find the surface area of the triangular prism. So once again, to find the surface area of the triangular prism, we just have to find the area of each face and add. So the area of the triangular base, we need to remember our area formulas from earlier. Triangles are one half base times height. And our rectangles are simply base times height. So let's see, our triangles have a base of one and a height of 0.9. So as such, the area of each triangular base is one half times one times 0 0.09, which if we multiply all of that out, we get 0.45. All we did, one doesn't even matter, we found half of 0 0.9. Half of nine is 4.5, we move our decimal to 0 0.45. Now, the area of each rectangular face, here we have one centimeter, here we have two centimeters, and as we know, all of these happen to be the same. We're lucky in that case. So the area of each rectangular face is simply one times two, or two. Then we have to add to find the surface area, but how many of each do we have? So we have one triangle, two triangles, and then one, two, three rectangular bases. So when we add that together, we're adding our first triangular base, our second triangular base. Then we're adding rectangle one, rectangle two, and rectangle three. When we add them all together, uh, 45 hundredths plus 45 hundredths is the same as nine tenths. Two plus two plus two is six. So we get our answer to be six and nine tenths square centimeters. And again, it's square centimeters because we're not finding the internal volume. We're simply finding the area of the two dimensions of the faces. Let's look at this next one. Find the surface area of the triangular prism. So for this one, it broke it down to us in each of the shapes, which is nice and helpful because sometimes we might have to break it down by ourselves. So this first one here, we've got these two identical triangles. Which of these sides doesn't matter. I want you to think about that. 
So we have three numbers here. We have an 8, 17, and a 15. Which of them don't matter? If you said 17, you are correct. We don't care about that because it has nothing to do with it being a 90 degree angle. Only the 8 and the 15. 17 would be helpful for finding perimeter, but not for finding area. So we want to find one half of 8 times 15 because that's how we find our triangles. So when we're doing this, the area of each triangular base is 1 half times 15 times 8. So if we're doing this, 1 half of 8 is 4, 4 times 15 is 60. But I want to bring something up to you. When we have two identical triangles, does it matter that we find half? No. So if it makes sense to you, instead of doing the half, it can just be that one whole. Because as we see here, the other shape would be the exact same. However, I don't want to confuse you, so think of it still as the area of a triangle, one half base times height. So now we have to find the area of the rectangular faces. We've got several different rectangular faces here. First, we've got this rectangular face, which is 15 times 20. What is 15 times 20? So I always, whenever we're doing this, I want you to pause and work alongside with me. The easiest way to actually do this is to put the 20 at the bottom because then we automatically start with a zero. So I'm going to skip that and just magic zero it. So we get our answer to be 300. As such, the next is 17 times 20. We get 340. Then the last is 20 times 8 and we get 160. Then we have to add to find the surface area of all of them. So we're going to add 60 plus 60 plus 300 plus 340 plus 160. And if we add those all together, 160 and 340, that's 500. 300, that makes it 800. And then these are 120, meaning that we add it up and we get 920 square meters. Let's look at one more example here. A bakery, box, uh, a bakery boxes pastries in a triangular prism box as shown. Find the amount of cardboard used to make the pastry box. So they gave us this drawing right here and it asks us to sketch and label the bases and faces of the triangular prism. So essentially we wanna break it down to the part they're all touching. Typically that's this middle part right here as we do see. So we've got this middle part that's been broken down and we know that that's seven inches long because it told us over here. So we know that's seven inches long. We also know that it's one inch thick, as is this, as is this, as is all of it. So we break it down into its pieces. So we're gonna wanna find the area of each of these. Luckily, it's pretty easy. The area of this one, since it's only one inch thick, is just gonna be 12.5. The area of this one, since it's only one inch thick, is 12.5. The area of this one, since it's only one inch thick, is seven uh, inches. Here, we have our base of seven and our height of 12. So we're gonna do one half times seven times 12. One half times 12, that becomes six. Six times seven equals 42. So this one is 42. And this one is 42. Now that we have the answers to all of them, 12.5, 12.5, 7, 42, and 42, we're going to add all of that together. So we have 2 of the 1 half times 7 times 12. Those were the triangular faces. We got that to be 84, a.k.a. 42 plus 42. Then we had 2 times the 1 times 12.5 because we've got two of them and that gave us 25 and then lastly we had seven which was seven we add them all together and we get 116 square inches what they did here was they did uh, repeated addition as multiplication because two times this right here that's 42 so instead of doing two uh, 42 plus 42 they just multiplied it by two so we get 116 I want you to pause and we're going to do page 774 to 775, letters A, B, and C. Let's look at A together. So for A, for starters, 
I just want to say that I love math almost as much as I love my kittens, which are my favorite thing in the entire world. I love my cats more than anything. So find the surface area of the triangular prism. Here, once again, we want to break it down into its pieces. So here we know that this is six and this is seven. And these happen to be equilateral, so it's all the same. So what we have is we have three different rectangles that have sides of six and seven. Sides of six and seven. And as such, each of them is gonna be 42 on the inside. Excellent. Then we also have these triangles. The triangles have a height of 5.2 and a base of 6, which means it's 1 half 5.2 times 6. Yet again, I hate having to work with this, so I delete the half, delete the 6, and I leave it with a 3. 3 times 5 is 15. 3 times 0.2 is 6, so we get 15.6 as our answer. So in this situation, we now have three rectangles and two triangles. So if we were going to write this out, let's do our math nice. We've got three of our rectangles and two of our triangles. Here, we multiply, we do our math. I want you guys all to do that, so make sure you hit pause in between. And we managed to find out that... 3 times 42 is 126. And we get 2 times 15.6 to be 31.2. So what we have to do then is we add them together. We get 157.2. Let's look at this next problem. We gotta find the surface in, uh, area of each triangular shape, again. So this time, once again, we have to break it down. This one is not equilateral as the other one before, but we still are able to break it down. Now, here, I've got this shape right here. For our triangles then, let's draw them. We know our base is four. This hypotenuse is seven, but do we care? No, but we do know our height is 5.7. So now we've got two of these triangles. Let's see, one half base height, right? We'll cancel this out and we'll just say it's two. Two times five is 10, two times 0. 0.7 is 1.4, we get 11.4. So two of our triangles, 11.4, excellent. We also have our rectangles though. This rectangle right here has a length of 8.6 and it has a height of 5.7. So our first one here is 8.6, 5.7. But then we've got other rectangles that we're invested in. This one has a height of seven and still a length of 8.6. So here we've got a height of seven and we got our length of 8.6. Then lastly, we have this base triangle, right? Or this base rectangle right here, which this rectangle, again, has a length of 8.6 and a side of four. So now we have to find out what the area of all of these are. So we hit pause and do the math. Now, when doing multiplication, we always make sure we line up to the far right. So we've got 8.6 times 5.7. Here we have 8.6 and we're multiplying that by 7. So we always multiply it that far right. Lastly, we've got that 8.6 times 4. Yet again, always on that far right. 7 times 6 is, oh, and we're going to move our decimals, but I was just going to deal with that later. We move it over 1, 2, so in the end we're going to move it back 2. Move it over one, in the back we're gonna move it one. Move it over one, in the end we're gonna move it over one. So let's do our math. Here, we've got seven times six, which is 42. We got seven times eight, which is 56, plus four gives us 60. Magic zero! Five times six is 30. 
5 times 8 is 40, so we get 43. We add these together, we get 2, 0, 9, 4. Excellent! We move our decimal back those two places, and we get 49 and 2 hundredths. Perfect! For this next one, again, 7 times 6 is 42. 7 times 8 is 56 plus 4. We get 602. We move it back, we get 60.2. Lastly, we get 4 times 6 is 24, 4 times 8 is 32, plus that 2, we get 34, and we move our decimal back one place. Now it comes time to do the addition. When we do addition, we line up our decimal points. So regardless of what it is, as opposed to lining it up, with all the far right, we line up our decimal points. So here, 2 plus 0 plus 0, we get 2. 0 plus 2 plus 4, we get 6 decimal points. 9 plus 0 plus 4, we get 13. 4 plus 6, we get 10. Plus 3, we get 13. Plus 1, we get 14. So we get our answer to be 143.62. But we are not done yet, because that is just the area of these rectangles. So we still have to find, we have to add that area of the triangles. 143.62, 143, and 62 hundredths. Excellent. So we're going to multiply this out. 2 times 11.4. 2 times 11 is 22. 2 times 0.4 is 0.8. So we get 22.8. We're going to add these together. 1, 4, 3, and 62 hundredths. 22 and 8 tenths or 80 hundredths. We add these together. 2, 4, carry our 1, 6, 6, 1. And we get our answer to be 166 and 42 hundredths. This I love just as much as Nutella, which I happen to love less than my husband. So while I love cats the most, my husband second, and Nutella third, I think math might be number four. So for problem C, it's that same thing. We're going to break it down into the pieces that there are. So we've got two triangles. We're going to draw those out. We've got one rectangle here. So first of all, our two triangles have a height of two and a base of five. Rectangle number one, let's draw that out. That's got a height of 5.4 and a base of 4. Let's draw out rectangle number 2. That one has a height of 2 and again that base of 4. Let's draw out rectangle number 3. This one again has that base of 4 and the height of 5. So we have all of that and we have to add all of these pieces together. This one's a little bit easier to do in our head. 4 times 5, 20. 4 times 2, 8. 5 times 2 is 10, but we get half of it, so it's 5. Again, this one's 5. 4 times 5 is 20. 4 times 0.4 is 1.6, so we get 21.6, or 21 and 6 tenths. If you're having trouble with the mental math, don't ever worry and just make sure that you take your time and do it on the side. Then we're going to add them all together. 5 plus 5 is 10, plus 20 is 30, plus 8 is 38, so now we've got 38, and we have 21 and 6 tenths. We line up the decimal point, we get... 59 and si uh, 6 tenths feet squared. Let's look at our guided practice now. So we're going to do guided practice numbers 1 and 2. For guided practice, we break this up. Luckily, as we see, this is an equilateral triangle because it's got a base of 5, a side of 5, and an other side of 5. When it's equilateral, that means that all of our rectangles on the side are also equal. It's very helpful. So here, we have our triangles. It's got a height of 4.3 and a base of 5. So we have 1 half times 4 and 3 tenths times 5. Then we also have, but we have 
two of those. Then we have our rectangles. Here we've got a length of four and a height of five, or 14 and a height of five. So then we have 14 times five. But how many of those do we have? We have three of those. So we're gonna multiply that times three. And we're adding all of those together. So let's go step by step. First of all, two cancels out with that one half. Boop, boop, gone. Four and three tenths times five. Four times three tenths times five. We do that and we get 21 and five tenths. Here, three times 14 times five. 14 times five is 70 times 3 is equal to 210. We add those together and we get 231 and 5 tenths meters squared. Excellent. So we get 231.5 meters squared. Guided practice number two. A skateboard ramp is in the shape of a triangular prism. If the entire ramp is to be painted, I'm assuming the bottom too, what is the surface area to be painted? So let's break this down. We have two triangles that are equal. So we've got with a height of 14 and a base of 48. And then let's draw out our rectangles. Here, I've got a side of 50 and the base of 36. As such, I have another one, and I can't see it as easily, but I know here that the length is still that 36, and instead of being 50, it's 48. And then lastly, I have another one, again that 36, and this time it's that 14. So it's kind of hard to picture it. Try to deconstruct it in your head. That's honestly the most important part. So then on your paper, I want you to do the math and figure out all of this. It's multiplication. It's a lot of multiplication and addition. So I have that up in my corner for reference. I've got two of the triangles that are 1 half times 14 times 48. I can cancel them out in any way, shape, or form I like, but I want to do it in the biggest way possible. So 1 half and 48 becomes 2 times 14 times 24. Had you done it a different way, it totally works. This is the exact same as 1 times 14 times 48 or 2 times 7 times 48. Trust me, all of them work. Let's check. 2 times 14 times 24 that gives me 672. If I did it another way, 14 times 48, hey, that's also 672. And then, again, this is 14 times 48, which is 672. So whichever way you go about it, it's going to have that same answer as long as you are doing the math correct. So this part here is 672. Then we got to find the area of each of our rectangles. It's just as easy as multiplying 50, 36. I like to put the zeros at the bottom because then 0 times 6, 0 times 3, it's always 0. So I start with my magic 0. 5 times 6, 30. 5 times 3 is 15. We get 18. So this one is 1. 8, 0, 0. Then for our next one, we have 36 times 48. So if I did 36 times 48, 6 times 8 is 48. 6 times 4 is 24. We get 28. Magic 0. 3 times 8 is 24. 3 times 4 is 12. 14. We get 8. We get 2. We get 7. And we get 1. So this one here is 1, 7, 2, 8. Then lastly, we have... 14 times 36. 4 times 6 is 24. 4 times 3 is 12. We get 14. Magic 0. 1 times 6 is 6. 1 times 3 is 3. And we get 4, 0, 4. So for 14 times 36, we get... I think I did my math wrong. Oh, because there's a 1 over that one. We get... That one is supposed to go over here. 504. So here we have 504. 
So, if you were following along, you would have caught my mistake. So hopefully you did. Then we got to add them all together. We get 1-8-0-0-1-7-2-8-6-7-2-5-0-4. And I'm going to add all of those together. 8 plus 2 is 10. Plus 4 is 14. 2 plus 7 is 9. Plus one, or plus 1 is 10. 1 plus 8 is 9. Plus 7 is 16. Plus 6 is 22. Plus 5 is 27. And then 2 plus 1 plus 1, we get 4. So for my answer, I get 4,704 inches squared. 4,704 inches squared. Excellent. Your homework is page 777, lucky sevens, numbers 1 through 7, lucky sevens. Thank you, guys.